All right, so let's find the range. So uh, let's, let's, let's just start by putting in the function and see how it works. So y equals three times the cosecant of three, uh, three x plus pi, close parentheses minus two. So this is the function that we're looking at. And as we noted, um, uh, there's always an x value, so it's sort of continuous. Whenever you move your cursor, there's always going to be an x value for whatever the y value uh, is. So for that, the domain is all real numbers. Now for the range, it's a little trickier because we have this gap here. Um, so what is that gap? I mean, I guess you could look at it by just looking at the the points. So Looks like the gap is from for the y is uh, one up here, and then negative five there. So it's basically everything that's not from one to negative five. That's sort of the 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 cheater's way of doing it. Um, what you can also do if you don't have a graph handy or uh, if you're not allowed to for some reason. Um, you could just sort of think about how the function looks originally without all the stuff added to it. So what I mean is like y equals cosecant of x. So that's what it looks like normally uh, without any of the additional stuff. And you'll notice here that we have a gap that will always go from 1 to negative 1. So the range in this case would be everything except 1 to negative 1. And we can talk about how to write that in a second, or maybe I'll just text it to you. Um, so, but what makes it tricky is that we have all this other stuff. So, for example, we have a 3 in front of it. And you'll notice that that makes the gap expand. So instead of going from 1 to negative 1, now the gap is from 3 to negative 3. So that changes things around. So that, that changes the range. Um, also, we have this stuff, the, let's see, 3, whoops, 3x plus pi. Notice, though, that that actually does not affect the range. We still have our gap from 3 to negative 3. So uh, the 3 up here, up, uh, up front, amplifies that, that gap. Uh, this stuff inside does not. The last thing we have to think about is this minus 2 at the end. So what that's going to do, and I'll just put it in here, minus 2, is that just shifts everything down two slots. So that's how we end up with this gap of 1 to negative 5. So the range consists of every single number except for this gap from 1 to negative 5. So again, how we got there, we started with just the regular function which had a gap from 1 to negative 1. We amplified that by 3, which multiplied that gap by 3. And then we subtracted 2, which moves it down. So um, I don't know if you've used Desmos. It's a really fun tool, and you can sort of see how things change as you move things around uh, or as you type stuff in. So, it, But in this case, the, the range would be everything that's outside of this gap. And the way you can write that is um, y, or I always get this mixed up, um, negative 5 is less than or equal to y, which is less than, or which is, I'm going to screw this up. Um, I have to like write it out, make sure I, I do this right. So negative 5 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 1. So the way that looks, uh, I'll text it to you, but just negative 5 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 1. So negative 5 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 1. Sort of hard to describe verbally, but it makes a little bit more sense. So um, let me know if this is helpful. Uh, maybe try this with some of the other things. You have some different functions to, to mess with. So um, let me know if you need help on 12, 13, or 14.